Hi YouTube family, my name is Alicia English and welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad to be back on YouTube and my busy season is finally over. So we're back to our regular content. These past couple weeks have been super busy for us here in the shop. We've been making a lot of custom orders and we've had a couple really big shows this holiday season. Last weekend, I had a local show I participated in the last three years and it was a really big hit. I'm gonna show you a few clips from that day. Here we are at our local craft show and the doors just opened and everyone is all set up and ready to do the day. We're really excited because today's event is for our regional cancer center. So all the proceeds from entry as well as donations go today and there's lots of raffles for people to be able to put their ballots in in the door. Everyone also is bringing canned goods today. I was really surprised that my small show was such a success. I was able to actually generate almost half the income in a one day, seven hour show that I did at the really big show that I did. So it just goes to show you that you don't have to be in the biggest show to create a good enough income. During this video, we're going to do a trash to treasure. You may have remembered a couple months back where I found an amazing sewing cabinet at the dump. We're gonna show you some clips from that day. We're actually been waiting and waiting and waiting to be able to do this video. Well, yesterday was my birthday and my boy surprised me with an amazing present. It was just what I needed to complete this video. There's even all the old sewing stuff in it. Look at old Singer. Oh, cool. No one even emptied it out. If you missed that Trash or Treasure video where I found this sewing cabinet, I'm gonna put the card above for you. You don't wanna miss that video so you know what's going on during this video. Lots of messages have been coming through and comments about what I'm going to do with this cabinet. So we're going to transform this into a really neat sewing table. I'm so excited, let's get started. The sewing cabinet needs a lot of work and I want it to look nice and fresh and be able to use my new toy on it. So what I wanna do is give it a pop of color but still keep it neutral so it can kind of fit in any space. This was obviously a very well-loved sewing cabinet, so I love that saving it from the landfill means I can give it some new life. The first step to restoring this sewing cabinet is giving it a really good clean, and then I'm gonna get sanding. All of these sewing treasures were left inside, so I'm gonna box them up and then look through them later. Because I wanna add a pop of color, I have a really neat idea on what I'm going to do to the sides of the drawers. So when you pull them out, it will give that pop of color that I'm looking for. I found a really fun paper that I'm going to mod podge onto the sides to be able to do that. On all of the drawers, they have this really neat original wood knobs, and I'm going to twist them off and set them aside. Many of you know that I love cacti and succulents. If you've been following my channel, you know I have a slight obsession. I was able to find this awesome printed cacti paper at my local craft store. This paper was only 30 cents a sheet and I bought six pages. I'm going to do something different today when using Mod Podge. If you've ever purchased Mod Podge before, you'll know that even a little container like this can be up to $5. If you needed a larger size, you're looking at up to maybe 12 or even $15. And it's something that you don't see at the end. You use just to adhere something to another surface. I have a DIY that I'm going to use using white glue and water to be able to make my own recipe for Mod Podge. In my jar, I have just a couple, maybe about a quarter of a cup of water, and it's a little bit warm. And then I'm going to use some white Elmer school glue and mix it together. I used approximately a half a cup of the Elmer's glue and I'm gonna mix it together. And now I have Mod Podge that will dry clear. 
Using one of my Alicia English brushes, you can purchase these on my Etsy shop in different colors. I'm going to apply Mod Podge to the side of this once I measured and cut my paper to fit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up to the edge of my drawer where I want it to go. Hold it in place. And I'm going to create a little crease at the top here so I know exactly how tall my drawer is. This will be better than actually measuring your width with your measuring tape because this side of the drawer may or may not be exactly the same as this side because it is an older cabinet. So now I have a creased cut line where I can follow with my scissors. So I'm going to apply some Mod Podge to the side of the drawer now. This will take a little bit of time to dry, so you will have a little bit of time to manipulate your shape to make sure that it's perfect. So now that I have that on, just gonna put a little bit more on this end because I didn't go quite far enough for my size of my paper. And it's kind of like stuck down like it's done like a sticker almost. And then I'm going to take my Mod Podge and paint on top. If you have any bubbles, you can crease them down with your paintbrush firmly or just use your finger and then make sure that you use your brush strokes going in one way. That way you don't have a bunch of lines at the end. It should go pretty smoothly. I'm gonna let that dry and then I'm gonna come in and do another coat. I'm going to do this to the right side of my other three drawers. That way these sides can dry before I can flip them over and do the other sides of the drawers. So I'm gonna do the same technique with all of them. So this bottom part is actually a door, not a drawer. And so I'm going to actually cover my paper on this part. So I'm gonna do the same technique where I line it up on the sides and fold it at the top and on the side. I'm going to remove these hinges of the top here so that I can actually paint this properly and then I'll be able to reinstall the hardware at the end. Because the top of this is actually a really thin layer of veneer, I need to do a sand to help my paint adhere a little bit better. I'm gonna use my Beauty Tone Just Straight White Paint right out of the can. It's my favorite fresh white paint. It doesn't have any yellow tinge to it. So I'm going to do a really light scuff sand on all of this and then I'm going to do my first coat of white paint. because I have some of the original wood stain or something that someone maybe cleaned this cabinet with seeping through where there were some cracks in the veneer. I filled with some white putty and waited for it to dry and then rolled over it and it keeps coming through. So in order to salvage this, I'm going to use a piece of some caning that I got out of an antique chair and I'm going to see if I can apply this to the front keeping the shape that it kind of is originally with this cabinet. I think it will match the hardware and it will cover up this mark here and I'll be able to salvage this part.
I really love how this cabinet turned out. I love being able to save things from the landfill. Just putting a little bit of extra love into it really made a big impact. I like the use of the paper on the side. That's something I hadn't done before and it turned out really cute. I like that this can look very neutral in any space and then have that little pop of color when you open the drawers. I know for sure I'll try this again on a future project, maybe on the sides of a dresser drawer. Using the DIY Mod Podge recipe saved me a lot of money and it also made me really comfortable knowing there wasn't any additional chemicals in the Mod Podge. Elmer's glue is non-toxic, so I knew water and non-toxic Mod oh, non-toxic glue <laughs> was going to be perfect and be chemical free. I was so surprised that the boys surprised me with a beautiful new sewing machine. I have a huge list of things that I want to create and I know that I have a lot to learn, but this is something that I want to be able to use for my business as well as for my YouTube channel. Since my Alicia English paintbrushes launched, you guys have been asking me for painting and creative aprons. I've been looking for a supplier where I'm really happy with the quality of the aprons and unfortunately, I haven't been able to find any. So what I'm going to do is in the new year, I'm going to be launching my own handmade by me, Alicia English aprons. They're going to be available on my Etsy shop. I'm so excited to show you the designs for these aprons and I know that the quality as well as the design is going to be exactly what I was looking for. Even though I was disappointed that I couldn't find a supplier, I think this actually works out better anyways because these items will be made by me. This also gives me the opportunity to really research the materials that I'm going to use to create my aprons. That way I know that I can keep them as eco as possible as well as my packaging for shipping. I wanna say thank you to everyone who's been supporting my new Etsy shop. We just have a few items on there and we have over 250 sales just in the past couple of months. You guys are supporting this like crazy and we're so excited to get some new items launched for you. Thank you so much to everyone for all of my amazing birthday wishes. You guys are incredible and all of the kind words you guys sent me yesterday really brightened my birthday. I'm really excited about my new sewing machine because I can think of all the amazing upcycle projects that I can do using my sewing machine. Every time I go to the thrift store, I find amazing upcycled linens that I know I can make and put to good use. So I'm really excited about all the possibilities with my sewing machine. I wanna know if you love to sew and what kinds of things you like to work on. Let me know in the comment section down below. I am absolutely obsessed with linens, especially vintage fabrics, and so I'm really excited to be able to set some time aside to be able to learn how to do a lot of things on this sewing machine. When I was working full-time and running a business full-time, I just couldn't invest as much time as I wanted to to work on projects. So I'm really excited about how much time I'll be able to invest into using my new machine. One of the very best things about my birthday present wasn't necessarily my sewing machine, but it was actually that my boys, all three of them, took me to the fabric store to get me all of the supplies that I needed. It was so fun watching them go around sort of knocking things over in the fabric store, picking out linens and showing me all the things that they thought I needed to buy. They got me all hooked up with all the supplies I needed to get me started. I'll be working on this on my leisure time during this holiday break. 73,000 subscribers. This is just absolutely incredible. We're looking at reaching our goal sometime in the new year. So we're really excited to hit our 100,000 milestone. Thank you so much for everyone's support. Our next video, we're really excited to be able to share with you because we are starting to launch our Pinterest series. We're going to be tackling a project that I know we can make for less using upcycled and leftover materials. The project that we're going to be working on is one I've wanted to make for about two years and just haven't had the time to do it. It's something that I'm even going to put in my own home. Thank you so much for watching and for all your support. I love you guys and I'll see you on the next project.